Over the last month, we have been building our 30 by 48 foot pole barn kit from Backwoods Buildings. This entire project has gone up with hardly any issues and it's been incredible to see this building go up right in our backyard. However, this week was a hard one to stay motivated from things out of our control. I can't make this up. This has been my life for the last couple of weeks. Blue skies over here, dark skies over here, and dark skies over there. I'm just in constant fear of rain and I'm working on a roof. It's not a great combination. We're gonna see if maybe perhaps I can squeeze, I don't know, 30 minutes out of out of this small window weather I have right here. Let's just get to it. Well, that ain't gonna work. It is still soaking wet. That's the problem, it rains 10 minutes and it's like hours, unless the sun comes beating out. It's hours and hours before this starts to dry off. Well, it's going back down, figure something else out to do. I can't make this up. I've gone to the store, I've bought metal shears so that I can at least get up here on the man lift and cut off this edge. What's it doing? The moment, literally the moment I'm turning the camera on to go up to start doing this, it's raining. Oh, there goes nothing. These things were only $45, so I only have, you know, so much expectation. Good news is, this cheap tool's working great. Bad news is, I'm already stuck. Ugh, this thing's not easy to get unstuck either. I got that mess cleaned up, but before I make the same mistake again and get this thing stuck, let's just go back to what's been somewhat working. <laughs> Put it over here, we'll go up on the roof, we'll finish the screws. It's just one of those days. You just gotta roll with the punches and do what you can. Well, that sure is fun. I was uh, about, I don't know, 30 to 50 screws from finishing up, and it just out of nowhere pours raining on me. And I was right on the edge of the roof, so. Oh, but it's all done now. Got the entire roof screwed down. Pretty great feeling. I need to be like down up here, right on top of you. Uh, that matter. You can do a little bit of both if you'd like. I'm not doing very good on this filming. I need some more beetle tanks, apparently. <laughs> I would say. Hey, Molly, will you get us another roll of that beetle tape out of the box?
one hand does not move. Double check with a block. Make sure we're good. Right I'm going to try to explain what's going on here with this corner rake trim. Got this hung over one inch and eventually this is going to be cut and then folded down so that it kind of covers the edge of this. And then if you look back here, we've got two angled marks on there. One at uh, the current location of the panel and one that is one inch further away. So all I do is flush this up, make one mark back there, then scoot it in an inch out and make another mark. And then all we have to do is take it back down and I'll show you the cuts that I make on that. Very first cut is this one here which is that outside one, which is about an inch to an inch and a quarter past this one, which is a fold line. So make that first. And uh, I don't exactly know what I'm doing. I'm just doing what I think is going to work well in our situation because it is a little bit unique. Okay, we're going to make one snip here. Just gonna allow that to fold over. Now we're gonna make a cut all the way through here. That's gonna leave a little bit of a overhang to uh, cover the gap between this metal and this fold down. Now we're gonna cut this area here because this is all gonna fold down. So I'll make one snip this way, one snip on a 45, like. So, then I'm going to cut this corner off here, this lip off, and I'm just going to fold this little extra bit that I left there down. They make pliers for this, but I don't got them. I also don't have the correct snips either, but it works. This will just help finish that edge off. A little bit better than leaving a, a sharp cut. Square is a guide. Where is that guy? Same thing over here. Yeah, let's roll. So here's what the finished bit of uh, rake trim looks like. So this piece under here wraps around and that's because as you can tell there's still a large gap down there because we're going to have a one inch rough cut board just like that that runs all the way up that'll be our final finished uh, piece of fascia board but we don't have that right now and it'll be a while before I get that cut so this allows us to uh, Go ahead and finish this out and get our ridge cap on. But eventually that'll sort of sit like just like this, cover the end of that board so you don't see it. And then we get this nice sort of wrapping edge here. Get this nice little corner detail there. And that kind of hides that rib a little bit and doesn't make sort of a harsh line right there.
Well, folks, it's that time of the year again. Apple is coming out with a brand new iPhone, and we all have googly eyes thinking how nice it would be to have a new phone. But I'm still rocking the iPhone 11. And in fact, I just replaced a battery in this thing to keep it going by using one of iFixit's battery repair kits, which are super affordable and are on sale right now for 20% off all battery and screen kits for iPhones from now until the end of September. So if you're thinking about fixing up an old iPhone instead of spending the crazy amounts it costs for a new iPhone these days, then I highly recommend you check the links in the description below because iFixit is an amazing company fighting for yours and I's right to repair. And they're trying to keep e-waste out of our landfills because there's nothing actually wrong with this phone. It just needed a $40 battery and it's up and going and got many years left in it. So thank you so much iFixit for sponsoring this week's video, fighting for our right to repair. And let's get back into the video. Y'all cannot make this up. Molly and I have been trying all week to work on the shop and every time we walk outside it starts raining. So this entire morning it was supposed to be raining for hours. It never rained but we'd already planned to do all our stuff because it was going to be raining. And then we're like, okay, well, it's not going to rain today then, I guess, after all. So we just came back outside and uh, gave up on what we were doing, other things we were doing, and it's raining, it's sprinkling. Makes it real difficult to get up there on the metal roof. Oh, well, we might as well do something while it's raining. So I'm going to go ahead and cut our ridge cap here. We're gonna make it cut like that and a cut like this and then we're gonna fold this part down all nice and whatnot I think that's gonna work I don't really know let's, let's give her a go hope you know I don't really know what I'm doing I have to be honest with you very minimal experience with this and everything we're using is like profiles and things I've never used before like this thing is gigantic. This is like twice the size of any ridge cap I've ever put on, which is a good thing. It also makes a little, a little bit more to it. I haven't been this frustrated about a project or time period of a project in a very long time, but we have just been getting absolutely destroyed by these small rain showers. And it's Saturday and the video comes out Monday. So I've just had it up to here with it. We're getting on the roof while it's wet. I don't care. We're gonna try to get some closure strips down, which don't stick to wet roofs. So I got a rag and we're just gonna try to wipe it off and it's sprinkling and we're going to get some stuff done, Molly, all right? I'm not going to end off this week just with nothing, all right? Nothing to show for it. We're getting, we're getting some stuff done. They're going to get this whole ridge put on so that we can finish up the trim over there and we can call this roof done. The passion Look. behind Color. it. <laughs> this week. It's been one of those weeks. I'm getting daggum red clay dirt all over my roof driving me crazy. And the rain will wash it off. Yeah, not really. Go up there and look. There's crap all over. I'm going to get up there and dang mop it or something. Oh. Look at it. It's freaking raining. I it just would... can't even make it up. Every time I get in this man lift, it starts raining. I swear. Oh. Oh, I did put this piece up there during the rain. I mean, I didn't actually install it. Right <laughs> you yet. just set it up I there. just set it up there. Made me feel a little bit better. Oh my gosh, I hate it. No clue how to make this thing centered. All right, I need you to hold this on that line while I walk across. Oh, this makes me nervous. I got a hand on the roof. I'll be just Yep. I'm good.
Oh, I get to do the worst, most tedious job on the day I'm most frustrated. <laughs> Gotta love it, huh? Yeah. Also, I'm gonna need a, uh, I'm gonna need me a blade. Some people are going, whoa, 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 Dylan, what are you doing? You're putting closed strips in there. You're gonna fully close it up and you're not gonna have any ventilation. That's the plan. That's the goal. We are going to eventually spray foam this entire ceiling. And so there will be 100% um, climate controlled space in this shop. Every square inch, including the quote attic, which doesn't exist in our in our shop because of the metal trusses. And so, yeah, we're gonna have closed ridge vents. And this is probably not even necessary because we're doing spray foam. Surely it would fill these gaps up, but this will keep spray foam from coming out of our edge of our metal and looking bad. So that's probably a good cheap insurance policy for that. Hopefully I didn't do them too far apart. I did measure. It's always away. Oh, it's the wrong way. Didn't let me put this thing on the whole time the wrong way. I didn't know. Killing me, Smalls. I'm just a girl. <laughs> wow. I'm screwing it. Okay. It's a little, a little dented. Because <laughs> I forgot that that's actually a... Why that dented? That's fine. Ah. The, the rope is supposed to be keeping me safe, and it's the only thing I ever slip on. Molly, I'm realizing something. Hmm. If I put a bit more forethought into that. Could have just put those closure strips right over the top of our other screw heads and then use longer screws and go on all the way into the purlins instead of just into the top of the ribs, which is what the plans call for. Like, that's fine. But that's probably a better way to do it. Should I do that on the next ones? I don't think so. I think I just need to keep doing it the way I'm doing it. Don't overcomplicate it. Just get her done. All right, folks, we have just five pieces left on this entire metal roof. So let's get on the man lift and start knocking these out so that we can finally finish up this entire roof system.
Here's a little look at our corner detail that we're doing. It's a little unique because we have an extra large overhang. We won't have gutters on this roof. There hopefully will eventually be a lean-to here, so stuck this out a bit more. You'll also notice that there's a one-inch gap here because we're going to have a rough-cut uh, fascia board that goes and slides underneath there and sticks down a little bit lower eventually. This little area here folds over. will cover up the end of that fascia board. And as you can see, we have this that kind of covers up the edge of these sheets. And then that little fold down, which kind of makes a nice little end piece there. And we use that butyl tape along that entire length of that, which I don't actually think is necessary because we have a full rib and we don't live in icy conditions. So water, even if it got underneath this thing, couldn't actually get in the building. But this first piece is installed. We're going to go up and add in the very last piece of fascia trim which is uh, a big deal and then we'll have just one single piece of the ridge cap to put on this piece laps three inches over that first piece and now all i have to do is mark it here where i pre-cut the other one and uh, make a single cut up the front at a 412 pitch and then a single cut across the top we should be done with this trim oh that's going to be nice i'm also letting that piece over here overlap this one a little bit so that I don't know, there's no there's no uh, hole there at all it would take I don't know it would take an act of God to get water into there but you know it's the little things of course I run out of butyl tape on the last actually half of the last piece it's the way it goes gotta run to the store and get some more back from the store got the goods 50 feet it's the smallest roll I could get I literally need four feet that's the way it goes. Let's get these last couple pieces slapped on here, and this roof of this pole barn is going to be done. Alright folks, here we go. The very last piece going on the pole barn roof. There we go, folks. Very last piece installed. Man, that feels good to have this entire roof done. And now we can start focusing on getting the dirt ready for concrete and eventually even the walls. This is a great milestone in our dream shop build here for sure. Well, Miss Molly, what do you think about your completed roof i cannot believe this is in our backyard now isn't that wild we have a full building well we have roof well it doesn't matter there's a structure here that wasn't before and we did it ourselves and didn't we you did it yourself hey no pops. no well pops big thanks <laughs> to pops for helping make this happen for sure because we couldn't have done it without his help but miss molly i don't know if uh, you realize it or not but You've been putting in some work over here too, keeping all, of, <laughs> keeping everybody here up with videos and such. It is Sunday, guys, and this video is coming out tomorrow, and she's having to edit this whole thing this weekend just because of the rain and everything, and so That's she's really she's killing it. This week, leave a comment down below for Molly, oh, no. telling her thank you. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.